Poll. Most Americans support stopping importing Chinese products to push back CCP's ambitions. Chinese regime presses Japan to refrain from chip export curbs. Woman exposes Chinese experts goes viral online. Illegal legalization? Beijing is sending anti-corruption officials abroad. Nearly 80 percent of general election voters agree that the U.S. needs to stop buying products from China to combat aggression from CCP and reduce dependence on Chinese manufacturing, according to a survey. According to Breitbart, the result is from a survey released by the Convention of States Action slash Trafalgar Group last week. The survey asked Americans the question, would you be willing to stop purchasing Chinese products as a means to help counter the aggressive actions of the Chinese Communist Party and reduce America's dependence on Chinese manufacturing? As a result, 78.7 percent said yes. Meanwhile, 11.4 percent said that they were not sure, and the rest said no. It is worth noting that the percentage of voters supporting the bipartisan saying no to Chinese products is quite balanced. 74.2 percent of Democrats agree not to buy products from China, while this figure for Republicans is 92.1 percent. 67.1 percent of independents also share the view. In February, the threat from China's regime was discussed in a hearing held by the U.S. House Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party. Human rights activist Tong Yi attended the hearing. He said that the U.S. needs to face the fact that we have helped feed the baby dragon of the Chinese Communist Party to grow into what it is. Tong Yi added, U.S. companies exploit cheap labor in China that has enriched the CCP. Wall Street, through its passive investment portfolios, transfers billions from retirement accounts to the CCP. It didn't have to be this way. We are now seeing the consequences of these policies. The Chinese regime tries to dissuade Japan from joining the U.S. efforts to restrict exports of chip-making equipment. As the Chinese chip industry struggles with sanctions from the U.S., the Financial Times reported that Chinese Foreign Minister Tin Gang suggested the move during Beijing's visit from his Japanese counterpart Yoshimasa Hayashi, the first trip by a top Japanese diplomat in over three years. Tin Gang said that such restrictions would only strengthen Beijing's effort to achieve self-reliance in semiconductors. Tin Gang's comments signal that the Chinese regime is under pressure and actively seeking to alleviate last year's U.S. chip sanctions, as the bans hurt its chip industry. Hayashi's visit came after the Japanese government on Friday said it plans to restrict exports of 23 types of semiconductor manufacturing equipment. The move is in response to a call by the United States to limit China's ability to produce advanced chips. These types of equipment include cleaning, deposition, lithography, and etching. The plans are part of Japan's deal with the U.S. and the Netherlands. Last October, the U.S. imposed export restrictions on chip-making equipment to China. The move from Washington aims to cut off China's access to chips used in artificial intelligence and supercomputing that the regime exploits to build its chip industry and enhance its military. The U.S. since then has urged Japan and the Netherlands to join its export control curbs to strengthen and protect advanced chip technology. Both countries are working on restrictions of their own. The Dutch government said it planned to add more to its export control measures as early as summer. The Chinese regime has also urged the Netherlands not to join the deal, as the Chinese ambassador last month warned of consequences if it imposed such curbs. In another sign of pressure from Beijing over the chip restrictions, last week, Beijing launched a cybersecurity probe into U.S. chipmaker Micron, citing national security. In the fourth quarter of last year, Japanese exports of chip manufacturing equipment to China decreased by 16 percent, while the U.S. had a 50 percent plunge and the Netherlands experienced a record 44 percent drop. Recently, a video of a woman complaining about Chinese experts has gone viral on the Chinese internet. In a video posted by the Twitter account Mao Shen on March 30th, a woman complained about Chinese Communist Party CCP experts. She said Chinese experts are different from foreign experts in that foreign experts study high technology to benefit their country's people, while Chinese experts study how to counter the people and how to rationally steal ordinary people's money. The woman said more than 30 years ago, when China's population was less than 1 billion, 
When the population is too large, the country implements family planning, won't allow you to have children, it forces you to have abortions, or be fined. Now China's population is 1.4 billion, but it encourages us to have children. Even unmarried people and college students can also have children. The woman said, it is not China's territory getting bigger, but too many houses being built, and no one buys them. Chinese experts and capitalists cooperate to find a way to sell houses. They move resources like schools and hospitals to the cities and then force you to buy houses in the cities. If you can't buy it, your children can't enter public schools. She also said that to sell chicken essence, they suppress MSG, saying eating MSG will cause cancer and hair loss. However, it turns out the first ingredient of chicken essence is MSG, and the rest is toxic chemical waste. Experts also said overeating pork would cause cancer and three highs, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, and high blood fats, but they only want to sell salad and cooking oil. The Chinese have turned from being disappointed to being desperate. The woman also gave other examples. They suppress Chinese medicine not for the people's sake, but for the fear that traditional Chinese medicine will overwhelm Western medicine. In rural areas, they don't allow you to burn trees to make you buy more chemical fertilizers and pesticides. They don't allow farmers to burn firewood for cooking to sell liquefied petroleum gas. They don't allow electric cars, not for the safety of people, but for people to buy petrol cars and contribute to insurance companies and gas stations. She said it was Kang Yue, the leader of the 100 Days Reform in 1898, who proposed monogamy in China, but he was married to six wives. The first person to propose family planning was Ma Yinchu, whose two wives gave birth to a total of eight children. Therefore, the one who made the rules was the most unruly. Rules are just tools for enslaving and oppressing the commoners. Finally, the woman said, Cremation is not to save land, but to make you pay more money. Chinese people have turned from being disappointed to being desperate about experts. They scoff at experts, saying that they are the ones who specialize in harming people. Netizen, Chinese experts serve the CCP, whose biggest enemy is always the people. In a Vision Times article, author Gong Yuan pointed out that experts and scholars often refer to those with expertise in academia, technology, and art as having high professionalism and credibility. In China, experts and scholars were initially quite respected, but now they seem to be less and less recognized. The article points out that once Chinese experts become public figures under the CCP's coercion and seduction, some become accomplices and advocates of it, throwing away their conscience to deceive the people. The woman's video has caused a wave on the Chinese internet, with Vision Time citing netizens' comments as follows. Who could command experts? Who can control experts? Who is the root of evil? This woman has a clear mind, only criticize experts, not the CCP, who nurtures experts due to fear of being censored. This somewhat opens up a public awareness, so I still have to praise her. Replace the word experts with the CCP, then this video will make more sense. The Chinese experts are now the same as the CCP. There are CCP-made policies. Why blame experts and capitalists? The CCP is like an evil machine. It makes all the gangsters do evil. Its division of labor is so good that most people don't even realize they are being manipulated and become part of the evil machine. Because the Chinese experts are working for the CCP, and the CCP's biggest enemy has always been the Chinese people. Human rights organization Safeguard Defenders recently accused the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, of setting up illegal overseas police stations to intimidate and harass dissidents abroad in the name of helping overseas compatriots. It is also reported that China's Central Commission for Discipline Inspection, CCDI, has begun to send anti-corruption law enforcement officers to overseas embassies and claim the purpose is to hunt down prisoners in exile and recover illegal assets, attracting public attention. The Wall Street Journal cited Chinese sources familiar with the matter on March 30th as saying the CCDI, the highest anti-corruption agency in the CCP, and other related government agencies have begun setting up anti-corruption law enforcement agencies at some Chinese embassies. They aim to track down corrupt Chinese officials who fled abroad, recover illegal assets, and seek cooperation from foreign governments. This is the latest international move by Beijing to intensify the anti-corruption campaign promoted by the CCP's top leaders. Reportedly, these so-called anti-corruption law enforcement officers are mainly stationed in countries where corrupt CCP officials can hide large amounts of illegal money, such as G20 countries. The article mentioned that the CCDI had committed earlier this year to step up efforts to fight corruption across borders, especially in countries participating in the Belt and Road Initiative, including some G20 members.
The CCP is operating abroad in the name of fighting corruption and claiming to seek cooperation from foreign governments. However, the Wall Street Journal thinks Western countries are increasingly concerned about the CCP's illegal overseas law enforcement. Also, the previous allegations about the CCP's overseas police stations have not been eliminated. It is impossible to determine whether the so-called anti-corruption law enforcement officers of the CCP will engage in other activities. However, Laura Harth, campaign director of Safeguard Defenders, revealed last year that the CCP had established a secret overseas police station. The CCDI has sent anti-corruption law enforcement officials as liaisons for foreign embassies. This attempt to position the agency abroad and legitimize its illegal means to force fugitives back to China. Harth questioned whether such a deployment could seriously impact the rights and freedoms of the CCDI's potential target groups. At a policy meeting in January 2023, Li Shi, secretary of the CCDI, committed to continuing the Skynet campaign this year while also working to improve the law enforcement mechanism outside of China without specifying how it would be implemented. According to a recent draft, Chinese lawmakers have discussed including a similar commitment to promoting international cooperation against corruption in the forthcoming foreign relations law. International law enforcement activities often involve official government-to-government cooperation and assistance requests, and the U.S. has criticized the CCP for secretly pursuing fugitives in its country. Related allegations include Chinese security agents entering the U.S. under false pretenses, tracking suspects, and coercing them to return to China, sometimes using their family members as intermediaries. The article cited some foreign diplomats as saying the CCP's deployment of anti-corruption officers abroad is politically worrisome, as host countries often consider members of foreign diplomatic missions to be government officials rather than political agents.